from Anshay Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parashat Yitro, the Ten Commandments, and the Exceptions. If we look in, in Rashi, who quotes in fact in the Chilta, the major Midrash on, on Shemot, uh, he says the following. When it says, Zachor v'shamor, Zachor, that you should remember the Yom HaShabbat, the Kachor, remember the sanctity of Shabbos. Rashi says, Zachor and Shamor, B'dibur Echad, that we were told to remember the Shabbos and to keep the Shabbos, guard the Shabbos in one breath. And uh, so too, he says, that God said that you, you must keep the Shabbos, it's a very severe matter, but also Yom HaShabbos, Nei but there are two sacrifices that can be brought, should be brought, must be brought on Shabbos in the days of the temple. Or it says in the Torah, Lo til do not wear wool and linen together. But then it says uh, that you should make tzitzis. And uh, usually people would wear, uh, uh, wear flax or linen garments. And uh, they could wear, uh, they were allowed to wear wool tzitzis uh, in that garment. So in fact, you can wear tzitzis. Or it says, do not, uh, you cannot take your, uh, you, your brother's wife, that, that would be forbidden. However, it says that if, if the brother dies without children, then you should marry your brother's wife. So, uh, so Rashi says, Achas diber Elohim, Shtayim Shushamati, quotes the Pasuk, the verse in Tehillim in Psalms, that says uh, that, that, uh, that God spoke one, but I heard two. This is something that a human being cannot do, but God spoke both ideas at the same time. Now, the idea that somehow God said uh, one law, that you should, you should keep the Shabbos, remember the Shabbos at the same time, that's one thing. Rashi's telling us something else. He's telling us that there are laws and times in the Torah when God tells you, do not do this. And then at the same time, he tells you that that same thing is a mitzvah in a different circumstance, that it doesn't apply in another circumstance. And, and Rashi says these are said simultaneously. Both are said at the same time. Salvechik said that these three matters, Shabbos regarding sacrifices, uh, the claim, the shatnez, the mixing of linen and wool when it comes to tzitzis, and the idea of yibum, the Leverite marriage, when it comes to the prohibition of marrying a sister, in these areas, that prohibition disappears. There are prohibitions in the Torah which exist, very much so, all the time, but under certain circumstances, they cease to exist. There are, uh, for instance, all the commandments. If it's a matter of vikuach nefesh, if it's a matter of someone forces you to do it, you need to, to live by the Torah, not to die for the Torah, unless it's the three terrible uh, ordinal sins of idolatry, immorality, or, or uh, worshiping idols. But otherwise, we should live by the Torah. Or even to save your own life. We're allowed, uh, says the Minchas Chinuch, uh, to... Uh, to, to save our, our lives, because uh, f to save our lives for the purpose of, uh, uh, even if it means violating a, 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 a prohibition in the Torah. This idea that, that, that uh, Zachor v'Shamor, how does, how does this idea relate to Zachor v'Shamor? So there's a Tamiya Mitzvah, it's a book about the mitzvahs by Menachem Abav, and he says, that, Shom, that Zachor means to remember Shabbos, to keep Shabbos. And Shamor means, watch out, don't keep Shabbos when you're not supposed to keep Shabbos. When you need to save your life, do not keep Shabbos. Guard yourself from not doing that. That's how Zachor and Shamor, these two phrases, are actually said at the same time. They're simultaneous uh, obligation. Now, there are many other uh, commandments, for instance, having a bris on Shabbos. You, you're supposed to have a bris on Shabbos if it falls, the eighth day falls on Shabbos. If it wasn't a cesarean section, certain circumstances. Now, is that a totally permitted? Does it mean that regarding Shabbos, there, regarding a bris, there is no Shabbos? Uh, so uh, so uh, one could argue uh, in many different cases, uh, Shabbos, Tzitzis, uh, Mila, uh, all these cases, one can argue, is it Hutra? Is it totally permitted? Or is it just hudcha? It's the prohibition is pushed off for a little bit, not completely. For instance, when it comes to wearing the wrong kind of tzitzis, tzitzis that are that are a mixture of linen and wool, the the, the Tosfot says that from a Torah perspective, 
Even if you're wearing the tzitzis at a time when you, when you don't have to wear tzitzis, at night, you still are exempt from uh, the prohibition of mixing linen and wool because when it comes to tzitzis, linen, the prohibition of linen and wool doesn't apply at all. Even a woman who's not obligated in tzitzis, if she's wearing that tzitzis, that talis, since tzitzis, regarding tzitzis, the prohibition doesn't apply. Therefore, says Tosfos, Raiva disagrees, that says Tosfos that the prohibition is completely waived. There are times when prohibitions are completely waived. They don't exist. As Rashi says in Brachos, Rashi says, When the Torah prohibited uh, the uh, a Kohen from coming in contact with the dead, it was not referring to a Mes Mitzvah. It was not referring to when there's no, no one else to take care of the dead. There's no one else aside from this Kohen. He must do it. The Torah is not, in that case, the Torah is not telling the Kohen not to defile himself. There are cases where the Torah, the, the Torah law not only is pushed off, but it doesn't exist regarding vis-a-vis that scenario. So the, the Ramam, in fact, says when it comes to saving a life on Shabbos, you could say, well, let me get a Gentile to, to, to save the life on Shabbos. He's right here. The Gentile's right there. Why should I ask him, why should I do it? It's my Shabbos. Let the Gentile do it. The Ramam says, no, when you violate Shabbos to save a life, you don't do it through a guy. You don't do it through a woman. You don't do it through, through the child. You do it through Gedole Yisrael. You do it through the biggest rabbi who's there to show. And because this is the law, that Shabbos doesn't exist when it comes to saving a life. There's actually, the Rugged Shavar points out, there's a fascinating midrash that's set in Parsha Kitisa, where it says that you might think that if there's a war on, God forbid, on Shabbos, and the Jews are defending themselves, so maybe the rest, since they, they, since they already violated Shabbos for, let's say, part of Shabbos, and the war is over. So they say, well, since Shabbos is over, it's over. So we say, no. Nonetheless, even, uh, even though you violated part of Shabbos, continue, go back to Shabbos afterwards. Why did the Midrash need to say that? Says the Raga Chavar, you might have thought that once Shabbos disappears because of, of saving a life, defending the Jewish people, you might think that it disappears completely and the Shabbos is over. He comes and says, no, Shabbos is still there. But theoretically, when there are exceptions, when there are exceptions to uh, the Torah, uh, to certain laws, and those laws disappear in, uh, in, in, in their entirety. Aaron Lichtenstein once said that it's very easy to know this is uh, it's important to love, it's important to be kind, it's important to be good, it's important not to lie. It's very easy. But to know what to do when there are con- conflicting values. You have shatnez, but you have tzitzis. You have a bris, but it's Shabbos. You have a, a, a saving a life situation, but, it, but it's Shabbos. What are the rules then? And when God spoke the Ten Commandments, He not only told the simple laws, uh, don't kill, don't steal, and then keep the Shabbos, don't, don't violate the Shabbos. He also told us that there are exceptions. That there are to, that at the same moment that he prohibited these things, he also said, have a bris on Shabbos. Save a life on Shabbos. And, uh, and you, you can wear the climbing and tzitzit. You can, you can, you, you can uh, bury the dead when there's no one else to do so, even if you are going. And this way, the Torah is not a simple text that simply tells us simple laws, but rather it's a complex system in which there are times when the law itself, severe laws such as Shabbos, can actually turn off and other, other values come to the fore. When to do so and how to do so, of course, needs to be done. Great consultation with scholars to know exactly when one applies and when the other does. The key is that the Torah comes with all its complexities. It's important to understand when... Sometimes there are times... To, to, so to speak, violate the Torah, so to speak, uh, I recognize that there are times when the Torah doesn't apply. Those laws don't apply. And this is the complexity of the message at Mount Sinai. This is something that the human being can barely understand and perceive. There could be a law, and there could be a time when that law is, is, is suspended for various reasons. A time to, to honor parents, and when they tell you to do something that's not good for them, a time not to honor them, not to listen to them, because... That's because they're telling you to do something that's not good for them. There are times, says the Sefer Hasidim, even not to listen to our parents. So, it's a fascinating thing. The Torah, the Torah is not a simple system. The Torah is a complex system. 
It's a system of obligations, prohibitions, and also exceptions. When there are, is an exception, the law is suspended, according to some interpretations, in its entirety. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Anshay Sfar Beth Lama's congregation here for our discussion of Parshat Yitro. Join us each week and each holiday as we discuss the laws of the Torah, Parshiot, and the holidays. Thank you to Jason Lefkowitz for making today's presentation possible. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asbe.org.